Okay, so let's take a look at a couple of examples. So we have find the Maclaurin series of sine x, find the Maclaurin series of cosine x, and find the Taylor expansion at one of e to the x. And in all cases, we're asked for the radius of convergence. Okay, so to find these Maclaurin series and this Taylor series, we need to find a formula for, in the case of the Maclaurin series, f differentiated n times and evaluated at zero. This will require finding some kind of pattern in the derivatives, as we can't compute every derivative individually by hand. This would, in a very literal sense, take forever. So let's try and start off with sine x and see what I mean when I say finding a pattern in the derivatives. OK, so let's start off with the solutions. OK, so f of x equals sine x. Now, using the formula c0 is then just we evaluate this at 0. And sine of 0 is 0. f prime x is cosine x, which tells us that c1 is cosine, evaluated at 0 over 1 factorial. Remember, cn is f differentiated n times evaluated at 0 over n factorial. So f double prime is minus sine x. So that tells us that c2 is minus sine x evaluated at 0 over 2 factorial, which is 0. f triple prime is minus cosine x, which tells us that c3 is minus cosine 0 over 3 factorial. Now, here's where the pattern kicks in. So if I was to differentiate again, what would I get? If I differentiate minus cosine, you'll notice I actually get sine. So I get back to the start, and this goes in a loop. So this would tell me that c4 is minus sine 0 over 4 factorial, which is just 0. If I go again, c5 is going to be cosine 0 over 5 factorial, which is 1 over 5 factorial. I go again down the ladder. C6 is minus sine 0 over 6 factorial, which is 0. C7 is minus cosine 0 over 7 factorial, which is just minus 1 over 7 factorial. So I keep cycling through these four derivatives. The only thing that changes is the factorial on the bottom. Every single time, I'll have either sine 0, cosine 0, or minus sine 0, or minus cosine 0. So Tx, if we look at this, we'll notice that all of the even c's are gone. We're only left with the odd ones, and they alternate in sine. So we have x minus x cubed over 3 factorial, plus x5 over 5 factorial, minus x7 over 7 factorial, plus the next term would have been x to the 9 over 9 factorial, and it changes sign. Now, it's not easy to see, but you can encompass this into a formula. Minus 1 to the n, 2n plus 1 factorial, x to the 2n plus 1. And I'd like you to pause and check that this formula is correct. Just write out the terms in the dot, 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 and you'll get what we have for tx. OK, so we were asked as well to find the radius of convergence of this. So a n here, so is minus 1 to the n, 2n plus 1 factorial, x to the 2n plus 1. a n plus 1 is just, well, everywhere we see an n, we plug in an n plus 1. Now, there's, there's a subtle point here in that the 2n plus 1s will now become 2n plus 3s. You have to be careful and think about why this is. So x to the 2n plus 3. It's because we'll have 2 times n plus 1, so it'll be actually be 2n plus 2 plus 1. Okay, so let's look at this limit. We're using the ratio test, remember. So this is the limit, n goes to infinity, just like in the previous lecture. Minus 1 to the n plus 1, x to the 2n plus 1, or 2n plus 3, sorry, over 2n plus 3 factorial times, and we flip a n upside down. So minus 1 to the n on the bottom, x to the 2n plus 1 on the bottom, 
under 2n plus 1 factorial. Now let's do some algebraic cancellations. We don't care about the minus 1s, they're just going to disappear. So what are we left with? So the minus 1s are gone. We have 2n plus 1 factorial cancels with 2n plus 3 factorial, and you're just left with the first two terms, which is 2n plus 3 times 2n plus 2. If you're confused about that, pause and think about it. Write the two out, and we get an x squared left on the top. So this is limit n goes to infinity x squared over 2n plus 3 times 2n plus 2. Now, for any fixed x, this is going to be 0, because the bottom is going to go to infinity. For any fixed x element of r. So no matter what you plug in to the top, you could let x be 4, 5, 67 billion, it doesn't matter. If n goes to infinity, the bottom is eventually so much larger than the top that you can make this as small as you want, it goes to 0, which is always less than 1. So we have r is equal to infinity. It'll work, it'll work for any x, so that means r is equal to infinity. If you're confused about this, go back to the previous lecture and look at the definition of radius of convergence and how we use the ratio test to compute the radius of convergence in those examples from the last lecture. Okay, so try to replicate the process I just went through for cosine x. You should get t of x is 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the 4 over 4 factorial minus x to the 6 over 6 factorial plus dot dot dot, which written in the summation notation is sum from 0 to infinity minus 1 to the n over 2n factorial x to the 2n. So it's very similar to sine, except it's all the even terms. And in terms of the radius of convergence, you should get that r is again equal to infinity. Okay, so in the third example, the difference is we're asked for the Taylor series expansion around a equals 1, rather than in the previous two examples where a equals 0, i.e. the Maclaurin series. But the process is exactly the same, except obviously a is 1 f of x in this case is e to the x, tx is going to be, just write down the formula, f difference at n times evaluated at now 1 over n factorial and then x minus 1 to the n. Okay, so we are tasked again with finding a formula for fn evaluated at 1, but let's look at the derivative of e. One. If we differentiate it once, we get e to the x. If we differentiate it twice, we get e to the x. If we keep differentiating, if we differentiate it as many times as we want, we still get e to the x. And this goes on. So, hence, f differentiated n times evaluated at 1 is always just e evaluated at 1, which is just e. And this is for all natural numbers, including 0. So 0, 1, 2, etc. So just plugging this into the formula now, we get sum n equals 0 to infinity e over n factorial x minus 1 to the n. And that's it. We have found the Taylor series expansion around 1 of e to the x. We'll now compute the radius of convergence which is a n equals e over n factorial x minus 1 to the n. That tells us that a n plus 1 is equal to e over n plus 1 factorial x minus 1 to the n plus 1. So let's look at the limit of their quotient. a n plus 1 over a n equals lim n goes to infinity so e over n plus 1 factorial times x minus 1 to the n plus 1 times flip a n upside down n factorial equals now what cancels the e's obviously cancel 
and we see that we're left with one power of x minus one on the top and the n plus one factorial cancels with n factorial to just leave an n plus one on the bottom. Now, like before, for any fixed x, this is equal to zero because the bottom blows up. So if you write down what x has to be, any number you want, it doesn't matter, it'll always just go to zero. So we have, it converges for any x, so r is equal to infinity again.